Welcome back. The unexpected resignation of State Representative Dan Rollerson of Plant City due to medical reasons opened up a fast-track special election in Hillsborough County. Our next guest is one of the candidates hoping to fill that spot. In our Sunday Spotlight, community activist Yvonne Fry lays out her campaign vision and why voters should support her. Yvonne, thanks so much for being here this morning. Thank you, Appreciate Paul. it. You know what? You have quite the resume. A community activist, you're head of several committees promoting women in leadership, as well as a talent agent, to name a few. But the question is this. It's your first time running for public office. Mm -hmm. Is that a good or is it a bad thing? I think it's a great thing. Um, I think a fresh approach in Tallahassee is a, a welcome addition. Um, but to me, it's, it's really been a natural progression of service and seeing opportunity, things that need fixed, things that need help, organizations, um, you know, business, uh, schools, on and on. So to me, this is really a natural progression. But you talk about a progression, though. What about the experience that, that some would say, you, hey, Yvonne, you need to have this to, to get up to Tallahassee. I, I agree with that. But if you look at the things that I've been involved in, I've been in leadership. I'm currently sitting as chair of the Chamber of Commerce in Plant City, advocating for our businesses. I was a founding member and I'm on the executive committee of our Plant City Economic Development Corporation. I'm the immediate past chair of the Hillsborough County Commission on Status of Women, as well as the Florida Commission on the Status of Women. That list goes on and on of community service and leadership. And I, th I think I've, I've, I've spent some time in, in the trenches and, and I'm prepared. I'm so ba basically what I'm hearing is a, a lot of people know you in the community. Your name, uh, people know who you are. They know my results as well. They know your results. Okay. Yes. Uh, let's talk about some of the important issues in the, er the area that you want to uh, go ahead and represent, uh, District 58. Right. Um, uh, Eastern Hillsborough County, including uh, Wesley Chapel as well, no, right? No, Plant City across to Temple Terrace. Temple Terrace, yes. all right. Yes, yes. Um, I'd imagine uh, jobs, the economy. Uh, what do you think are the three top issues that uh, need attention per your, uh, who would be your constituents? Well, my constituents, it's, it's interesting because of the three cities in Hillsborough County, Plant City and Temple Terrace are two of those, which to me I call them the sister cities. There's a lot of similar things about economic development, um, creating opportunity and, and making those cities strong, um, which I've spent a lot of time in in Plant City. I'm exploring and looking at the similarities and the needs in, in Temple Terrace and want to represent them equally um, with their unique needs and so on. But there's a lot of similarities that I can tie together and, and bring to bear. The, the next thing for me is education. I have been heavily involved in um, our schools in Plant City. Not just, I mean, I've been PTA president all mm -hmm. along the way, mm -hmm. but in innovating and piloting new things. We piloted a program at Tomlin Middle School that was about social and emotional intelligence for kids. And your third third issue would be? Would be public safety. Public safety, yeah. okay. Yeah. You know what, I, I, I wanna talk about a headline, uh, a story that's making headlines around the nation right okay. now, and that's con the Confederate statues. Uh, it's, it's pitting people against people. Uh, Governor Rick Scott saying, there's a process that should take its course on the local and state level but he stopped short of weighing in on this. What would be uh, your say on this? Should they stay? Should they go? Is there somewhere in the middle? Um, I think there's somewhere in the middle, and each community needs to approach this and process on it. And I, I want to respect, you know, communities and, and, and what needs to happen there locally. My, um, there, are, it's our history. And I hope that we continue to learn from our history because we've had a lot of very difficult things. And the other challenge that I would put out to people is that we need to be writing the history we want to be about today of how we get along, how we get, how we process on what happens with these and every, all the other very important issues that we need to be focused on. And you know, the primary is a little more than a month away. I believe it's October 10th, October correct me 10th, if I'm wrong, yes. my birthday. Yeah, oh, uh, good. <laughs> the special election, December 19th, is that yes, right? Yes. All right, so that, that's a tight schedule. So the question, I have is, did you already have plans in the works for a late bid like this? I had been looking at this for 2020 when Representative Rollerson would have been termed out. Mm -hmm. He surprised us all, and um, it, it was a very quick process of huddling up with the family, um, friends and, and supporters in the community that had encouraged me on this, um, looking towards that time frame, and we have hit the ground running. My city commission all reached out the first day and, and endorsed um, 
other folks in leadership and the elected and, and civic leaders and so on continue to come to me and, and, are, and are supporting me and we're working hard. The ground game and, and all of it. Something you might need to work hard on is, is your campaign war chest. You began with, I believe, $7,500. You have less than two months to go into the primary. How are you going to get more contributions and who do you think you're going to be able to get them from? Well, that the first reporting was from just a couple of days of that, that last month of July. We are hard at work with that and have had very widespread, um, diverse support and are, are on track with what we feel our budget needs to be for this campaign and are in really great shape. 30 seconds for this last co uh, question, education. And when I say that, uh, there's a, been a lot of partisanship. Yes. Uh, we know uh, House Bill uh, 7069, a lot of backdoor politics, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, for that bill to pass. Uh, and specifically, that diverted a lot of money from public schools to charter schools. What position would you take, uh, especially if it was going to affect programs at schools in the county that you would represent? Um, I had concern with the way that bill was crafted in the, the timing and, 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 and the process behind it. Um, I think there was some good things in it. My kids went to public school in Plant City. That was a decision that we made. I, I know a lot of families that need other options, whether it's homeschool. I have a lot of friends that do homeschool. I have friends in charter school, private school. I think that school choice is important, and each family should be able to make the decision for themselves of what's right for them and their, and their children. Yvonne, thanks for coming in thanks today. Thanks for having Wish me. Wish you luck. Thank you, Paul, very much.